Welcome to Unit 9, Video 1, Lewis Structures. By the end of this video, you should be able to determine the number of valence electron and electrons an atom has based on its position on the periodic table. You should be able to draw Lewis structures for compounds with single bonds. You should be able to draw Lewis structures for compounds with double and triple bonds. And you should know what resonance is and how to represent it in a Lewis structure. Let's go back and review quickly. When we're talking about Lewis structures, we're talking about molecules held together with covalent bonds. Recall that covalent bonds in sh involves a sharing of a pair of electrons between two atoms, as opposed to a transfer of electrons, as in ionic bonds. The sharing of these electrons can be equal or unequal. This will be important a little bit later. Covalent bonds form between two non-metal atoms. Recall that molecules involve all non-metal atoms. For instance, if we have a hydrogen atom bonded to another hydrogen atom, they can share a pair of electrons to form a covalent bond between them. Also reviewing, a molecule is a group of two or more atoms held together by covalent bonds. Recall this is different than a formula unit because molecules exist as discrete units not attached to one another. The molecular formula shows how many of each atom there are in a molecule. So for instance, CH4 has one carbon and four hydrogens, so its molecular formula is CH4. We can also draw a structural formula, which is what we're going to be doing largely in this video. This shows how the atoms are bonded together. So here, above CH4, you can see the structural formula of this molecule. It shows the bonds as lines. Another example would be C2H6. Here, the molecular formula tells us that there are two carbons, C2, and six hydrogen atoms, H6, in each C2H6 molecule. And above that, we see the structural formula showing us how this molecule is put together. When drawing Lewis structures, we only represent the valence electrons. Recall that valence electrons are electrons in the highest principal energy level. A Lewis structure represents how the valence electrons are arranged around atoms in a molecule. We can use the group on the periodic table to determine the number of valence electrons an atom will have. Let's look at a noble gas like neon. We know that neon has eight valence electrons. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. This is a full octet. Notice that the dots form somewhat of a square here, which with two on each edge of the square. Here's a refresher to help us remember how many valence electrons each element has. Notice the Lewis structures are represented here. You should be able to look at the periodic table and know how many valence electrons each element has based on its group. Before we start drawing Lewis structures, let's just remind ourselves of the octet rule. Remember, the octet rule tells us that atoms are most stable when they have eight valence electrons. When forming ionic bonds, atoms achieve eight by gaining or losing electrons to form ions. But in covalent bonding, atoms are going to be sharing electrons in order to achieve, to achieve a full octet, or in the case of hydrogen and helium, a full duet, two valence electrons. Keep this in mind as we proceed. Let's look at an example. Here we have two hydrogen atoms, each with one valence electron, and one oxygen atom with six valence electrons. Since oxygen needs two more valence electrons to achieve eight, and hydrogen needs one more valence electron each to achieve two, its duet, these guys can share electrons. Each hydrogen will share one electron with oxygen, and, each, and the oxygen will share one electron each with each hydrogen. We have two kinds of electrons in this picture here. We have a bonding pair, which is represented in red. These are pairs of electrons that are shared between two atoms and represent a bond. 
And then we have unshared pairs or lone pairs shown in black. These are pairs of electrons not involved in bonding. Notice if we count here, oxygen has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight electrons, making it a full octet. So oxygen has all eight electrons that it wants. And hydrogen has one, two, and this hydrogen has one, two, giving each hydrogen a full duet, which is what hydrogen wants. Therefore, via sharing, every atom in this molecule has achieved the most stable electron configuration. As we said, unshared pairs are often called lone pairs, just another name for them. When we start drawing Lewis structures, we're going to start replacing these red dots with dashes to show the bonds between atoms. Here's the steps for drawing Lewis structures. The first thing you want to do is add up the valence electrons of all of the atoms in a molecule. All of the valence electrons go into one pot. This is the number of dots you must use in your final structure. Then you start by using a pair to form bonds between two atoms. You can represent the bonds as lines rather than as dots, but remember each line then correlates to two dots, a shared pair of electrons. And finally, we arrange the remaining electrons around the atoms to satisfy the octet rule or the duet rule. Let's look at a few examples together, then you can try some on your own. Let's start with HCl. First, we need to count up valence electrons. We know that hydrogen has one valence electron and chlorine has seven. If we add these together, we get eight valence electrons to work with. This means we must have eight valence electrons in our Lewis structure. Now, let's draw our two symbols, H and Cl, and use two electrons to connect them with a bond. I've now used two to form that bond, so I have six electrons left. Notice that hydrogen already has the two electrons it needs to be happy. Those are in this bond right here. So we're not going to add any more electrons to hydrogen. Instead, we're going to use the remaining six to place around chlorine. One, two, three, four, five, six. So now let's count. Hydrogen wants to follow the duet rule, so it needs two valence electrons. It has two from this bond right here. Chlorine follows the octet rule. It needs eight. It has two from the bond plus the six dots around it, giving chlorine eight valence electrons. Therefore, this is a good Lewis structure. Take a minute to pause the video here and draw Lewis structures for NH3 and CH4 on your own. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. It's also possible that sometimes you might need a multiple bond in a Lewis structure, a double or a triple bond. For instance, try drawing a Lewis structure for the CO2 molecule. Pause the video and see if you can make it work. You'll see that you need 16 electrons and you need to have carbon in the center. If we do this, based on our normal rules, we would distribute our electrons like this. But in this case, Carbon does not satisfy the octet rule since it only has four electrons. So this doesn't work, but we've run out of electrons. So what do we do? When we don't have enough electrons to satisfy the octet rule for every atom, we can use a double bond. We can move pairs of electrons from these oxygens and share them as well. Here, carbon is sharing two pairs of electrons with each oxygen. Now the octet rule is satisfied. Carbon has eight electrons, as does each oxygen. This is called a double bond. Carbon is sharing two pairs of electrons with each oxygen. Therefore, it's forming a double bond with each oxygen. A multiple bond, then, is a bond in which two atoms share more than one pair of electrons. You can have double bonds or triple bonds, in addition to single bonds.
Here's some examples. Oxygen exhibits a double bond, carbon dioxide, two double bonds, and nitrogen, a triple bond. Here's some to try on your own. Pause the video here and see if you can draw these Lewis structures. When you come back, I'll display the answers. Welcome back. Here's what you should have gotten. There's two more small points that I want to mention before we end this video. The first is resonance. Occasionally, there's more than one valid Lewis structure for a given molecule. For example, the SO2 molecule at the bottom here could have the double bond between sulfur and the first oxygen on the left, or the double bond between sulfur and the second oxygen on the right. These are different structures, and in reality, that bond is actually an average of a single and a double. In other words, the double bond keeps moving back and forth between each uh, sulfur and oxygen combination. We represent this by drawing both structures and connecting them with a double-headed arrow. This indicates that both structures are not only possible, but that the actual structure is sort of a blend of the two. And finally, let's look at some Lewis structures for polyatomic ions. Recall that polyatomic ions are a charged group of covalently bonded atoms. Here we have to add or subtract electron to, electrons to account for the charge of the ion. And we also add brackets around the ion and the charge to indicate that the entire structure has a charge. For instance, let's take the nitrate ion. Nitrogen has five valence electrons. Oxygen has six, but there's three of them, so it contributes 18. That gives us 23 valence electrons. But NO3 has a charge of minus one when it's the nitrate ion, so we have to add one electron, giving us 24. When we distribute our 24 electrons, as shown, then we have a Lewis structure for nitrate. We include brackets and a charge, the negative symbol in the upper right hand corner, to indicate that the entire structure carries a negative one charge. You might also notice that this molecule here, this polyatomic ion, actually exhibits resonance as well, since that double bond can be between any of the oxygens here. Finally, like any good rule, there's a few exceptions to the octet rule. Some elements are said to be electron deficient meaning they have less than the ideal eight electrons, but are still able to form structures. Boron is the most common example. Boron in BF3, you'll notice, does not obey the octet rule. It only has six electrons. However, this structure does still form. This deficiency causes the BF3 molecule to want electrons really badly. Therefore, it's very reactive, and when it becomes in contact with electron-rich compounds, compounds with lots of electrons, it will react violently. Some elements, on the other hand, can exceed the octet rule. They can form more than four bonds. This is only possible for elements under period three, so elements in period three or higher. You might think about why this is. SF6 is a great example. Sulfur very often forms compounds that exceed the octet rule. Here you'll see that sulfur has far more than eight electrons. Finally, some compounds have an odd number of electrons. These are very unstable and therefore very reactive, and we won't come in, come in contact with them very often in this class. Now that we've re uh, introduced some ambiguity, some things to remember to put your mind at ease. Carbon, nitrogen, and oxygen, and fluorine almost always follow the octet rule. They'll never be electron deficient or exceed the octet rule. Boron and beryllium are often electron deficient. So if you have a compound with boron and beryllium and you can't make its Lewis structure work, you might consider that boron and beryllium have fewer than eight electrons. Second row elements can never exceed the octet rule third row and higher elements can exceed the octet rule. These are some guiding principles to help you since there's some ambiguity here. That brings us to the end of this video. Let's review our goals. First, we learned how to determine the number of valence electrons based on an atom's position on the periodic table. Then we learned how to draw Lewis structures for compound with single bonds. Then we did it for compounds with double and triple bonds. And finally, we looked at what resonance is and how to represent it in a Lewis structure.